In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus Na3PO4, calcium chloride plus sodium phosphate. So the first thing we need to do is balance the molecular equation. This is the molecular equation. I'll just write the coefficients in here. If you need some help balancing it, there's a video in the description on how to do the balancing just for the molecular equation. So we've got that done. Now we need to write the states in for each of these substances. Chlorides, calcium chloride, this chloride here, almost always are aqueous, so they'll dissolve in water, dissociate into their ions. Sodium compounds as well. And, you know, we would expect these reactants to be aqueous in the first place. On the product side, I'm not so sure about the calcium phosphate. So I'd like to actually look that up on a solubility table. And if we do that, we can find calcium right here and then phosphate over here. So we'll go down and then over. And that I there, that means this is insoluble. So it's not going to dissolve. It's not going to dissociate. In fact, it'll be a solid and it'll fall to the bottom of the test tube or the beaker when we react these two substances. So we put an S after the calcium phosphate. Next, we're going to split the strong electrolytes into their ions. These things here are strong electrolytes. Oops, I forgot the sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, we have sodium, which is very soluble, and a chloride, which is soluble, so that's definitely going to be aqueous. So we want to split these strong electrolytes into their ions. So to do that, we need to write the charges first. So for calcium, that's in group 2 on the periodic table. That's a 2 plus. Chlorine, that has a 1 minus. Sodium is in group 1. It has a 1 plus ionic charge. And then phosphate, you should know that the phosphate ion, PO4, that has a 3 minus charge. That's a polyatomic ion with a 3 minus charge. Calcium, we said, was 2 plus, 3 minus, and then a plus and a minus. So we have the ions. Now we can split them apart. We have Ca, 2 plus, and I'm not going to write aqueous after each one. We have our Ca2 plus, and this coefficient here, that means we have three of them. Let's move that over a little bit. There we go. The chloride ion, we have Cl minus, and we have two of these chlorides. So we put a coefficient of two there. Then we have Na plus. So we write Na plus, and we have three of those times the two. So we have six sodium ions, plus we have the phosphate PO4, three minus, and we have two of those. This two, it applies to everything. Those are our reactants. For the products, we're not going to split the calcium phosphate up because it's a solid. That means it's a precipitate. Essentially, it falls to the bottom as a solid, so we can't split it apart. So for net ionic equations, we don't split the solids apart. So we're going to write Ca3PO4, and we're going to keep that together. Oops, PO4, 2. Plus, we have Na+, plus. that's our sodium ion there. We have six of those, and then we have the 1 times the 6 six chloride ions. Looking back and doing a quick check of my work, I see that for this chloride ion, I have two here, and I have to multiply it by the three. This three applies to the whole thing. So this shouldn't be a two. It should be two times three, and that should give us a six. So you always want to go back and check your work once you do this. There's a lot of moving parts here. So I think this is pretty good. Now we can cross out the spectator ions. These are the ions. They appear on both sides of the equation. So if we look, we see we have Ca2 plus. Nope. 6Cl minus. That appears both in the reactants and the products. So we can cross that out. 6Na plus. That appears in both as well. So everything else is unique. That means we now have the net ionic equation. That's at 3Ca2 plus, the 2PO4, 3 minus, and then in the products, we have that calcium phosphate. Let me clean this up, write the states in, and then we'll have a nice, neat net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus Na3PO4. So this is the net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus Na3PO4. We have our three calcium ions plus two phosphate ions, and that gives us the solid calcium phosphate. All the charges are conserved, as well as the numbers of each atom. This is Dr. V. And thanks for watching.